وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحابه ومن استنى بالسنة لهم الدين All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day I welcome you back dear viewers to another in our series in the names of Allah and in this series, we're looking at the names of Allah from the perspective of not only their understanding, knowing what they are, know what they, knowing what they mean, but also looking at how they should impact on our lives. What place do they have in our lives? We said in the earlier segments that knowledge of Allah's attributes is critical because if we are to worship Allah correctly, we must know who He is. And how best to know but through the revelation of His names. Because each name contains an attribute informing us who is Allah. So we began a few segments back with the greatest name of Allah, Allah itself as number one and a segment or two ago we began to look at the second and third names of Allah Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim putting them together because of the fact that they share the same root the same root understanding root meaning of Rahma or mercy and um, I should mention, of course, that you know the order that we're taking it in is from a verse in Surah Al-Hashr. It's not necessarily uh, a required order, or that really, in fact, number two and number three are Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. They're just in the list that we're covering. They are number two and number three. And in the previous segment, we were looking at the vastness of Allah's mercy and how it encompasses all of his creation, and the elaborate details which the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, gave about Allah's mercy. Him writing it on himself as an obligation, him taking people out of the hellfire as on the day of judgment. His mercy covers even the wild animals of this world, preventing them from destroying their own offspring. In spite of their ferociousness, them being carnivores that have no compassion in that sense, well, that, that's how it appears to us as human beings, but they're just eating, it's normal for them, they're hungry, they eat. But as we observe them, it seems compassionless. They just tear the animals apart. But why don't they tear their offspring apart? Because of one portion of mercy out of 100 portions which Allah placed in this world and it is due to that that there's love amongst us love between a husband and a wife parents and their children and the love that ex that is experienced by all creatures is all from that vast mercy that vast ocean of mercy which Allah has placed in this world and in the previous segment, we closed it off uh, looking at a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ had said uh, concerning 
the uh, rain. Actually, the, there's a verse from the Quran where Allah refers to the way, rain as heralds of His mercy. Uh, the clouds, actually, as heralds of His mercy, mercy being the rain. But then, He went on to refer uh, not only to the rain, but to Scripture as being a part and parcel of His mercy. But Prophet Muhammad did state also with regards to Allah's mercy uh, and rain that uh, in a particular hadith in which uh, he said uh, a morning when he got up, uh, he said to his companions, Do you know what your Lord said last night? And they replied, Allah and his messenger know best. So he said, Allah said, some of my servants arose believing in me, and some of them disbelieving. As for him who said, it rained because of the blessing and mercy of Allah, he is a believer. As for him who said, it rained because of the rising of such and such a star, he is a disbeliever in me. So, Prophet Muhammad also quoted Allah, reaffirming in what is called a Hadith Qudsi, that the rain was from the mercy and blessings of Allah. But then we had gone on to also say that even the scriptures, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to the scriptures which He sent to His prophets, to human beings, as a mercy. And we explained why, saying that Allah had given us really enough for us to find the right way. But from His mercy, He added to that books. And not only that, he added to them prophets to explain how to understand the books even. So all of this is from Allah's mercy. And what we find in the Qur'an is that Allah even refers to paradise itself as a part and parcel of Allah's mercy. In Surah Taha verse 5, Allah says there, وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ بِيَضَّتْ وُجُوهُهُمْ ففي رحمة الله هم فيها خالدون. As for those whose faces are shining, they will be in Allah's mercy forever. The mercy of Allah forever that is being spoken about here is paradise. So Allah uh, refers to paradise as His mercy. And Prophet Muhammad himself had said, No one's deeds alone will put them in paradise. No one's deeds alone will put them in paradise. So his companions asked him, even in your case, O Messenger of Allah? He said, even in my case. If it were not for the grace and the mercy of Allah encompassing me, not even I. And that is a level of humility that one needs to reflect on. But reality is, paradise is from the mercy of Allah. No one will enter it except by the mercy of Allah. Had He taken us to account, or does, if He takes us to account, one deed evil against one deed good, no one would make it. But because He multiplies the value of the good deeds, he erases sins with those good deeds. It's possible for us to gain with His grace paradise. So, having looked at that, we need to now go and look at the impact, the effect of belief in these two names of Allah on the believer. How should it impact in our lives? First and foremost, we should have a clear belief in these two names and what they mean. We've seen so many different uh, statements of the Prophet ﷺ, statements of Allah SWT with regards to them. We should have no doubt that this represents a clear attribute of Allah which should not in any way be Explained away. Explained away as anything but what it is. 
And I'm saying that, one might say, well, who would go to explain that away? It's very clear, Allah's mercy, Allah's mercy. You know, we can see that. However, among the scholars of the past, from a philosophical school called the school of I'tizal, people who follow it are known as the Mu'tazilites, Az-Zamakhshari, a scholar from back in the 11th, 12th century, he, as a scholar of this particular school, argued that the term Rahma, or mercy, this quality or this characteristic or attribute is not to be attributed to Allah. That it is a human characteristic. That in fact, what it means in relationship to Allah is that He will bless His creatures. So it's in reference to His blessing of His creatures and not an attribute to be attributed to Allah. Uh, that position was held by not just Himself but by others. At one point in time, a philosophical school of thought, as I said, but it is rejected. The Prophet ﷺ spoke about it in no uncertain terms. When he talked about Allah creating mercy and dividing it into a hundred parts, this is all from his mercy, it's very clear, etc. Now let's go on to the issue of its impact in our lives. First and foremost, awareness of Allah's mercy throughout His creation should be like the awareness of Allah's dominion over His creation. We should see it everywhere. We should be aware, we should be conscious of it in every aspect of His creation because it is not missing in anywhere. So it should create a sense of awe and humility in the hearts of the believers towards Allah. They should be, by being aware, as they are aware of His might and His greatness, they should be aware of His mercy in such a way that it brings this sense of humility in the hearts. Just as the Prophet ﷺ had said that even he would not go to paradise by his deeds. That is the expression, ultimate expression, the Prophet of Allah, the final messenger of Allah. He is saying that even he will not make it to paradise merely because of his deeds. That's humility. And that's what awareness of Allah's mercy should create in the heart of the believer. We're going to take a brief break here and we'll be coming back to look further at the impact of these names. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the beneficent, the most merciful in our lives. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. And people need each other's, need scholars more than they need to drink and eat. Because even regarding what we drink and eat, we may not be able to figure out which is permissible and which is not. The Quran is not preserved in the books only. The seerah of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is not preserved in the books only, but in the, heart, in the hearts of men, in the hearts of people who have devoted their time to seeking knowledge. Belief and trust, tawakkul that none could take place without the knowledge of Allah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Welcome back dear viewers to our series in the names of Allah. 
prior to the break, we were looking at the first effect or impact that awareness of Allah's mercy through His names, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, should have in our lives. We said that we should gain from it a sense of Allah, the vastness of Allah's mercy, how it encompasses every aspect of His creation. Whenever we look, wherever we look, we should be able to see the mercy of Allah in His creation. And that should create in us a sense of humility before Allah. A sense of thankfulness, gratitude for the great blessings which He has given us through His mercy. Furthermore, a second impact should be that it should create in the believer a keenness to achieve the benefits of His mercy by causing us to want to strive our utmost to receive Allah's grace and mercy. On one hand, we recognize it and are in awe of it. We are humble before it. And on the other hand, we want it. We should want it. We should strive and seek whatever way possible to achieve it. We should be striving to achieve it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that one of the ways to achieve it is to obey Allah and His Messenger. In Surah Ali Imran, verse 132, Allah says there, وَأَطِيُوا اللَّهَ Obey Allah and the Messenger in order to receive mercy. Obey Allah and the Messenger in order to receive mercy. So this is one route. We want to achieve the mercy which Allah has in abundance. Then the starting point is obedience to Allah and His Messenger. Obviously preceding that is belief in Allah. But taking that for granted that we do believe or we say we believe, then the next step is to live that belief. To live a life in which is manifest submission, obedience to Allah and His Messenger. Another route is that of repentance. In Surah Zumar, Allah says there, Say, O my servants who have oppressed themselves, do not despair of Allah's mercy. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. In Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jamia. Indeed, He is the All-Forgiving, the Most Merciful. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Repentance. As the Prophet ﷺ said, أَتَّائِبُ مِنَ الذَّنْبِ كَمَنْ لَا ذَنْبَ لَهُ Whoever repents from sin is like one without sin. It removes sin. Sincere repentance, of course, removes sin. Once sin is removed, then we are open for Allah's mercy. Thirdly, the true believer should find incentive in his or her awareness of Allah's immense mercy to strive to show mercy to others. Now, this is the reflection. As we said some attributes can't be reflected. Allah's name being Allah, the Creator, Sustainer, All-Merciful, All-Knowing, etc., etc. We cannot reflect that. It's not possible. But mercy, Him showing mercy to us, we can show mercy to others. As He said, because of that one portion of mercy coming into this world, that one portion gives us the attribute of mercy. So we should strive to show it. Not only because it is a necessity having seen it in Allah, having been uh, explained it through His scripture and through the practice of the Prophet ﷺ, but also because in showing mercy to others, we ourselves can gain mercy. 
This is one of the routes to gain Allah's mercy. There was a particular incident which took place in the time of the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him. Abu Hurairah narrated it. Uh, the Prophet was sitting uh, with one of his grandchildren, Al Hassan ibn Ali, and he kissed him. And sitting nearby was one of his companions by the name of Al Aqra ibn Habis. When Al Aqra saw this, he said, I have ten children and I've never kissed one of them. He felt proud, he boasted. That was supposed to be, you know, a manly thing. You don't kiss kids. So, he saw Prophet Muhammad ﷺ doing that. He said, I have ten children, I've never kissed one of them. The Prophet ﷺ turned to look at him and said, Man la yarham, la yurham. Whoever doesn't show mercy will not receive mercy. So, the Prophet ﷺ clarified here that for us to achieve the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to show it. It's one of the requirements for us to achieve that mercy. And kissing our children, or kissing our grandchildren, or other people's children, this is a way of showing mercy. This, there's an element of mercy there. And um, some people might say, well, it's not in my culture. You know, I don't really feel a desire, you know. Well, start to do it. It's something that can be learned. As the Prophet ﷺ had told us with regards to the quality of patience, some people seem to be born with it and others not. But it's something that we need to have, we should have. So he said, May يتصبر يصبره الله Whoever pretends to be patient, with a desire, wanting to be patient, trying to hold himself and express patience, eventually he will become patient. So similarly, this characteristic, it's not our habit to kiss children. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ did it. He said, whoever doesn't show mercy, kissing a child is a mercy, and an expression of mercy, will not receive mercy. So we do it. We do it and until it becomes normal and natural for us. Another occasion, the Prophet ﷺ had said, لا يرحم الله من لا يرحم الناس. Allah will not show mercy to one who does not show mercy to people. So not just children, mercy in the society in general. And the Prophet ﷺ related to us a story, a story from an incident which took place in the past. Among the Israelites, there was a prostitute who came to a well to get some water. When she came to the well, she saw a dog outside of the well panting, its tongue out, licking the ground. It was dying of thirst. It couldn't get into the well to get the water. To jump in would be for it to die. So what she did was she tied her shoe to her scarf. She climbed into the well, dipped it in, Bring, brought her shoe out and fed the dog. When she did that, Prophet ﷺ said, because of it, Allah forgave her. Because of that act of mercy to a creature, to a dog, Allah forgave her her sins. So we can understand what the Prophet ﷺ said, that whoever doesn't show mercy will not receive mercy. One who shows mercy is uh, subject to receiving the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, being merciful is one of the higher characteristics that a human being can acquire. As it is one of the great attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's one of the great attributes of human beings. And Allah described His Prophet saying, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ I only sent you as a mercy to the worlds. Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 107. This is how Allah described Muhammad wasallam as a mercy to the worlds. And again in Surah Ali Imran, verse 159, Allah says there, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ 
ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لم فضوا من حولك it was by Allah's mercy that you were kind to them had you been harsh and hard hearted they would have fled from around you so this is a quality which each and every one of us should strive to acquire Usama ibn Zaid on one occasion related that people questioned the Prophet ﷺ when they saw him crying when his grandchild was brought to him. One of his daughters had a child who was dying and the child was brought to the Prophet ﷺ as it was in the last throes of its life. And the Prophet's tears came down the eyes of the Prophet ﷺ. So they asked him, are you crying for the child, O Messenger of Allah? They thought this was something, maybe, you know, um, not really appropriate. So he said in response, إِنَّمَا يَرْحَمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الرُّحَمَا Indeed, Allah is only merciful to the merciful among His servants. Indeed, Allah is only merciful to the merciful among His servants. And when the Prophet ﷺ was asked by Aisha, uh, what should she say when she goes to the graveyard? He told her to say, As-salamu ala ahli diyari min al-mu'mineen wal-muslimin. Yarhamu Allahu al-mustaqdimina minna wal-musta'khireen. Wa inna in insha'allahu bikum lahiqoon. Peace be on the believing and submitting people of these abodes. May Allah have mercy on our predecessors and successors, and Allah willing, will be joining you all. So, this was the recommendation of the Prophet Wasallam to show mercy, to try to acquire this characteristic, one of the great attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which each and every human being should try to acquire. It makes a difference. It's a means of receiving Allah's mercy. And how can we not want to acquire this attribute when Allah has been so merciful to us, even when we don't deserve it? So, with that thought, we're going to close our program advising, encouraging, as the Qur'an, as the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam encourages that we should be merciful to those around us. Whether believers or non-believers, children or elders, even the animals, we should show mercy to them. With that, dear viewers, I bid you all farewell. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. When life is a burden and everything is unstable Remember, just remember, Allah is the able When nothing makes sense and you're heading for demise Remember, just remember, Allah is the wise When the way is cloudy and there's no one by your side Remember, just remember, Allah is the only guide. When your heart is breaking and your pain makes you fall, remember, just remember, Allah sees it all. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. When life is a burden, and everything is unstable Remember, just remember Allah is the able When nothing makes sense And you're heading for demise Remember, just remember Allah is the wise When the way is cloudy And there's no one by your side Remember, just remember Allah is the only guide When your heart is breaking Remember, just remember, 